Solve the given differential equation by finding an appropriate integrating factor. So we have this equation y times the quantity x plus y plus 1 times dx plus the quantity x plus 2y times dy equals 0. So here we have a differential equation of the form m of x and y times dx plus n of x and y times dy equal to 0. So we can see in this case that the m of x and y, that's going to be, well, we can multiply these. We're going to get xy plus y squared plus y. And the n of x and y, that's going to be simply x plus 2y. So what we can do is we can first find the derivative of m with respect to y. Well, that's going to be, well, we're going to take the derivative of xy with respect to y, giving us x. The derivative of y squared will be 2y, and the derivative of y will be 1. And then we'll take the derivative of n with respect to x. So that's going to give us 1 plus the derivative of 2y, which is 0. And if we find the difference, m sub y, the derivative of m with respect to y, minus the derivative of n with respect to x, and we divide that by n, we're going to get x plus 2y plus 1 minus 1 divided by x plus 2y. And that's simply going to give us 1. And we could consider this only a function of x. Our integrating factor is simply going to be e to the integral of this 1 dx. And of course, that will be the integral of 1 dx, which is x. So we'll simply get e to the x. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the x. So we'll multiply both sides of this equation by e to the x, and we'll wind up with e to the x times, well, the x times y, so times xy, plus e to the x times the y times y, which is y squared, plus the e to the x times the y times 1, so plus e to the x times y and that will be multiplied by dx, and then we'll also multiply e to the x times x, and then add e to the x times 2y, and that will be multiplied by dy, and that will be equal to 0. So now we can see that our m in this case is going to be xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x, plus y times e to the x, and our n is going to be x times e to the x, plus 2y times e to the x. Now, before we can proceed with solving, we need to verify if this equation will be exact. So if the equation that we got after multiplying by the integrating factor is exact. So if this is exact, then the derivative of m with respect to y will be equal to the derivative of n with respect to x. Well, for the derivative of m with respect to y, we see that, well, for this first term, the derivative of y will be 1, and the x times e to the x will be a constant. And then the derivative of y squared will be 2y, and the e to the x is a constant. And then the derivative of y is 1, and the e to the x is a constant. So we get x e to the x plus 2y e to the x plus e to the x. And then for the derivative of n with respect to x, well, for this first part, we'll have to use our product rule. So we'll take x and multiply it by the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. And then we'll add the derivative of x, which is 1, times e to the x. And then we'll add, well, the derivative of 2y times e to the x will just simply be 2y times e to the x because the 2y is considered constant and the derivative of e to the x is 
e to the x. So we can see that this equation will be exact, so now we can proceed with solving it. So we have our differential equation that we obtained after multiplying by the integrating factor, and we have the m and the n. So because the equation is exact, that means there should be some function f of x and y such that the derivative of f with respect to y, well, that's going to be equal to this function n, which is x times e to the x plus 2y times e to the x. So what we can do is we can integrate both sides with respect to y. Now, if we integrate both sides with respect to y, we'll get f of x and y equal to the integral of this function, x times e to the x plus 2y times e to the x dy. And then we're going to need to add some function g of x. So this will be some constant of integration because we're holding x constant. Let's first find the integral. We're going to get f of x and y equal to, well, if we integrate x times e to the x with respect to y, we're going to get x e to the x times y. And then the integral of 2y is y squared, and e to the x is considered constant, so we'll get y squared times e to the x. And then we'll add g of x. So we'll rewrite this, we'll get xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x plus some g of x. So this will be f of x and y. And so now what we'll note is that we can take the derivative of f with respect to x. So let's take the derivative of this with respect to x, and we're going to get, well, the y will be a constant. So then we'll take the derivative of x times e to the x. So we'll take x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times e to the x. And then we'll take the derivative of this second part. Well, the y squared is treated as a constant, so then we take the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, and that will be plus g prime of x. And that will all be equal to, well, we know the derivative of f with respect to x is m. So that will be equal to the m xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x plus y times e to the x. So simplifying this, we'll get xy times e to the x plus y times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x plus g prime of x, and that will be xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x plus y times e to the x. And so we can note that everything is going to cancel on both sides except for the g prime of x. So g prime of x is going to be equal to zero. And that, of course, tells us that g of x could be some constant, which we could call, let's say, c. And so that means the solution for our equation, f of x and y, will be well, xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x plus g of x equals some constant c, but we can bring those together and just get some c sub 1. So our solution using an integrating factor for this differential equation is going to be xy times e to the x plus y squared times e to the x and that will be equal to some constant, which we can call c sub 1.